This is not just Christian television. This is life television. Welcome to Notes on Life. Hello, and we are so glad to have you with us today. If this is your first time here, thanks for taking your valuable time out of your day to watch this program. We always aim and promise to make the time here interesting, informative, and inspirational. I'm Pastor Teacher Wayne Estrada. And I'm Dr. Jeannie Sheffield Estrada, and we so appreciate you joining us today. As usual, there are a lot of important topics to cover in today's program, so Wayne, we need to get started. Our theme today is based on the three elements at the top of the banners behind us, and they are word, wisdom, and the world. Absolutely. And we carefully chose these three themes for our set, as well as this ministry. So let us start with the first theme of our set, and that is the word. We refer to both the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ as the Word. And we know from experience that there's great power in both of these. Yes, Pastor Wayne, that is absolutely true. Do you realize that everything began with Word? Yes, it did. Just look at the very first verse of the Bible, where in Genesis 1-3, God said, Let there be light. Yes, and simple as these printed words are, it actually all started with a sound, a vibration. It was the vibration of God's words that set everything in the universe and world that we know it today into motion. God said, and things happened. What's interesting here is the scientific principle that actually has a spiritual origin. Albert Einstein discovered this when he came to the conclusion that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. And to put this into more technical terms, in science, the law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. In brief, this means that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but rather can only be transferred or transformed or transferred from one form to another. Well, I know that sounds pretty heady and intellectual, but here's the thing. God is light and love. He's the source of all energy. And even from a logical point of view, once he spoke, he transformed his energy through his voice into the light and energy that started creation. So let's step back a minute and put this into practical spiritual terms, and that is this. As God's words were the energy that put all things into motion, our words likewise also can and do put things into motion for both good or bad. What we say really matters to others and can generate either very positive or very negative results. That's a real important point, Wayne. And as Christians, we know that this is to be true with the power of prayer. Effective prayer happens when we speak the will of God and the words of God. God loves to hear his word because his word is life and light and it's powerful. Jeannie, that's so true. And back a couple of years ago, you wrote an excellent article in your daily notes on our website in a message called Positive Words Impact Others, which is based on Proverbs 25:11 which says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Would you please read that right now? Absolutely. There's great power in the words we speak to others, especially when they are words of encouragement, praise, or thankfulness. 
Let others know exactly how much you value, love, or admire them, because it does not cost anything, but it only takes a little time and a little thought. For example, instead of an email, take the time to write a handwritten letter or send a postcard instead of posting on social media. Also, when it's someone's birthday, contact them directly and not electronically. Or at Christmas, send a note with your card telling that person directly how much you appreciate them. Or why don't you recall a fond time when you did something with them together? If your friend got a raise, received an award, or had another life event of value, recognize them for it. I think perhaps the biggest impact is what we say to children. The impact of your words can literally be life-changing by planting a seed in their heart and mind. Well, thank you, Dr. Jeannie. This is an excellent message that we all need to be reminded of often. Yes. As Proverbs also reminds us in chapter 18, verse 21, both death and life are in the power of the tongue. So it's so important that we apply our words carefully and wisely. Uh, and I've found this in my own life, that when people have spoken encouragement into my life, it's done great things for me. In our first program, I shared that uh, I'm a professional musician, a professional trumpet player, and I was privileged to play in the Navy show band uh, many years ago. And we traveled around the world and the director of that band, who wound up being the head of the Navy music program, uh, said something, not directly to me, but he said it to one of my fellow friends in the band. We were playing a gig, and it was actually in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and uh, it was at Christmas time, and I was playing in a jazz combo, and I was playing uh, one of the Christmas tunes in a jazzy way. And later my friend told me that our band director said, that guy is going to be an amazing jazz musician someday. And that one phrase was something that just ignited me as a musician. Oh, that's so wonderful. It's so important to have people in your life that speak into your life, that make you feel that you can do anything. That's right. And that, that one word of encouragement was something that I stuck with me all those years because he was so well esteemed in Navy music. And for somebody of that stature to see that in me, gave me confidence. You know, the word confidence uh, is from Latin. Con means with, and fid is where we get the word fidelity. So it's to have uh, truth. Fid or fidelity is truth, so have truth within you. So when we share a good word, we're sharing truth of confidence with others. Isn't that wonderful? And that leads us into our next segment today, uh, Jeannie, and that is about wisdom. One of the biggest mistakes people make in our modern society is a continued pursuit of knowledge over wisdom. Now, don't get me wrong. These times have been an explosion of great knowledge. We can see that. Look at medicine. Look at technology. Right. The Internet. And our world has benefited from it in so many ways. Yet the Word of God puts this into perspective when it admonishes us in Proverbs 4, 7, where it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Yes, that's so true, Jeannie. True understanding is directly based on the Word of God. Sadly, in so many ways, technology, science, and knowledge has been elevated above the Word of God as the source of truth. In fact, in a recent message we published on our website, we covered the difference between facts and faith, and that science is often elevated and venerated as the new religion of the world. Yes, and it's so important to understand that wisdom is to see things from, from God's point of view. And when we do that, our perspective of how we live our life and what's happening in the world becomes much clearer and understandable, Wayne. Yes, oftentimes we've shared here that especially shocking or difficult events in the world are much better understood through the lens of Scripture. Yes. God's Word is wisdom. And when we hold His Word up, primarily up to knowledge, things come into focus much more clearly. So along those lines, Jeannie, would you please share an article that you wrote about this a couple of years ago as well? 
Absolutely. Webster defines knowledge as the fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or association. It's information we have learned and seen through facts. On the other hand, wisdom is the ability to discern or judge what is true, right, or lasting, insight, common sense, good judgment. When Jesus taught, he often repeated himself over and over in different ways because he was acutely aware that many who listened to him had some knowledge of God, but not the wisdom of God. King David, however, grew in wisdom because he spent so much time alone with God and meditated on his word. Like he wrote in Psalms, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the inward part you will make me to know wisdom. Psalm 51, 6. Wouldn't you love to see things as God sees and what he knows? You can by drawing close to him and let the Holy Spirit give all kinds of wisdom and knowledge to open this up to you. This goes beyond our knowledge of living and experiencing life, and it cannot compare to the wisdom we understand and retain by spending time with the Lord. It's through his word and the Holy Spirit that we learn God's insight, judgment, and truth. Well, thank you, Dr. Jeannie. What you just said and wrote gives us all great comfort because as the world is in great turmoil today in this health crisis, in financial markets, in the flow of society, and just the flow of life, we can rest assured that God indeed has a plan. Now, friend, if you're watching this program, don't flip the channel right now. Don't look at this as something just as two silly pastors talking about this God stuff. This is real. God is in control. God does have a plan. And without God giving wisdom, we cannot ascertain this through our natural eyes and reasoning. But we can depend on the wisdom given us in God's word. In fact, in Corinthians, it says that, that the message of the Bible is foolishness to those in the world. Yes. These things are not foolish. God is real. He is in control. And despite the fear and loathing around us in, in the world, and the uncertainties in today's society. God does have a plan, but he wants us, and our message to you today regarding wisdom is this. Lean on the word of God. Don't lean on your own understanding. And you can see through the lens of scripture, the truth of the gospel. Friends, it's so very, very important that you spend time reading the word of God every day. Just as food feeds the body, the Word of God is the fuel that feeds our soul. We really believe in practice to start each day by laying your eyes on the Word of God when you awake and letting it light up your eyes before you go to sleep. Thank you, Jeannie. As Proverbs says, wisdom is indeed the principal thing. And so with all you're getting, get understanding. And this is something our world needs more than anything right now. And that takes us into our next segment today, and that is about the world. You know, perhaps the most famous and often quoted verse in the Bible is John 3.16 that says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In these turbulent times, we need to remember these two important things. First, that God loves everyone in the world, no exceptions. He loves everyone in all countries, on, on all continents. Many scoffers mockingly say that the Christian God only loves Christians. That's not true. That's not true at all. And that everyone else doesn't count. But that's not true. Please believe us. 
God loves everyone in all religions and all races. And the Word of God says this powerfully in 2 Peter 3, 9, where it says that God is not willing that any one perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, Jesus died for the sins of everyone in the world, not just certain people. So in spite of the tremendous turmoil in the world right now with the coronavirus, we have his hope in this trial, and that is that he has a plan. So let's take out our Bibles, all of us together, right now, and please read along with me from Philippians 4, 6 through 8, and let's see what God is telling us during this time of world crisis. This scripture is written by Apostle Paul, and it is so encouraging. So let's start with verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace be with you. Along with this passage from Philippians, please turn with me and let's also read from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6-11. through 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so this scripture is talking about that there are going to be trials in the world. And right now, we're going through an unprecedented time of trial. And the devil, as we talked about in our last episode, our last program, was the, the venom of the virus, the snake. He's also referred to as a roaring lion. And his primary goal is to disrupt people and to destroy people. He came to kill, to deceive, and to destroy. Yes. That's his mission. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to do that in the world right now. But we have the Word of God that tells us that we have the victory in Christ Jesus. Yes, we do. And we will trample on him. And we will fight him. We will not give in. And this is an important point right now. Rather than giving into the situation in the world. We need to be reunited in prayer. Prayer yes. is a more powerful weapon than people realize. And if the world would get together and pray, the Bible says, says that if my people would just humble themselves Sells. and pray that God we hear from heaven. I believe this is a test. And I think something actually good is coming out of this. And that is this, is giving people time in their homes to think about life, to think about what's going on in the world. As Christians, we have a responsibility and an opportunity to preach the gospel, to share the gospel. Hopefully people are taking time to watch this program and to maybe pick up that Bible that they haven't seen. In. Yes, hopefully you are. And hopefully when we read these scriptures together that you'll go back over them again and meditate on them and let them fill you up inside let them give you hope and encouragement to know that your Father in heaven is with you. You're not alone, no matter where you are in this world. 
God has not forgotten you. God is going to take care of us. And just as Pastor Wayne says, I believe that this is a test. And I believe that God is going to do something miraculous with it. And at this time, we want to say to you, don't look at the news on TV or the Internet for comfort or answers to the challenges all around you. Look at the Word of God. Here is another wonderful section of scripture from the epistle of James, starting at chapter 1. This is also in the New Testament for those of you that are new in the Bible. I, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You know, like these and other verses gives us that comfort is that as we continue to look forward and to depend on God, He's there for us. And as this last couple of verses mentioned, life is very short. Mm -hmm. This trial is going to be short. One thing I can assure you of, you probably will not die of coronavirus, but your soul will die without Jesus Christ. If you haven't accepted Christ, today is the day to make that decision that you want to ask Christ into your life. So let's move on to our next section today. And that is on our third panel, and that is the world. So, Jeannie, talk a little bit about that, please. Well, that's why our set is for this program, and it has the world as the third panel. Our mission as Christians and as ministers of God is just as Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, and that is to bring comfort to people and to share the good news and hope that's in the Word of God by going out into the world and sharing the gospel with everyone. And that's why we have it as part of our theme. So if you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, it's all of our responsibility to share what God has done for each of us and to bring people hope and to those that are in fear and confusion, especially today. Friends, we cannot emphasize enough how important this mission is to the world of sharing the gospel message of salvation in Christ, especially right now. Our ministry, like so many others, is all about sharing God's word in the world and getting people to make a decision about their place in eternity and to know that despite this worldwide crisis that we're in right now, that there is hope in the yes, world yes, yes. because God is in fact in control. Yes, and the gospel message is literally as simple as ABC. And if you do not know the ABCs of God's offer of salvation, let me share this message with you right now. The Bible tells us to be ready at all times and to quote an encouraging word and to remind others how God wants us to live. When someone asks us about the hope that's in us, we need to be able to quote our spiritual ABCs. A, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. B, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, come unto me, 
all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Strangers you meet on the street, time short, and the Lord's soon return is imminent. Don't find yourself in a hard spot not knowing what verse would touch another's heart that could change their life and save them. Make it a point to learn your spiritual ABCs, and you'll always be ready to share God's word, no matter the circumstance. Have the good news on your lips that Jesus not only paid for our sins, but that he's alive and living inside of those of us who have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. Be ready in season and out of season to share the hope you have and the assurance of heaven. When you bring another soul to Jesus, you will gladden the Lord's heart and give all the hosts and angels in heaven a season to celebrate. Well, it's been a pretty <laughs> eventful day today, and these are indeed trying times. So for a little bit of levity, I thought we'd share with you with some of the cartoons that we have on our website. Please go to notesonlife.org and scroll down towards the bottom of the page, and you can see several hundred cartoons. But here are a few that we'd like to share with you today. Thank you again for inviting us into your home. We hope and pray that this program today has been a blessing to you. Please watch for our next program and visit our website for more great content. But also remember that you can watch this and our other programs at any time online, television, on your computer or mobile device. Just click on the tile at the top of our website, notesonlife.org, to visit past programs 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Yes, and please remember that charity does indeed begin at home. So please remember to first and foremost support the local ministry of your church, but also please pray for us as we continue to bring these programs to you. And we would also greatly appreciate it if you will please tell your family and friends about Notes on Life. And we appreciate your support. And just remember the most important thing. Jesus, Jesus is, is the, the way, way, the truth, truth and, and the life. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. These are your notes on life. These are your notes on life. God has given to you